Welcome to another great episode of American Rifleman Television. This week, we continue our top 10 countdown on the most important machine guns of all time. This week, we focus on first the Colt Potato Digger, which was the first gas-operated machine gun ever, invented by John Moses Browning. And then we move into one of the most prolific machine guns of World War I, and that's the Lewis Light Machine Gun. This week in our Rifleman Review, we look at the Macmillan Ultimate Precision Stock, of course, with a Rock River action. For I have this old gun, we look at Germany's first smokeless powder military rifle, and that's the Gewehr 88, the commission rifle. But right now, let's focus on the top 10 machine guns. Coming in at number eight is a John Moses Browning design that wasn't as widespread as some other guns, but very important because it established the gas-operated machine gun. And that is the model 1895 Colt machine gun, also known as the potato digger. The Lewis gun was, in some respects, mechanically pretty complicated and pretty unusual. A clock spring was wound up by the movement of the operating rod that then sent the operating rod back forward to chamber a cartridge for the next shot. And of course, the pan itself was mechanically linked to the movement of the action. So this was not as simple a gun as we think of in today's context of a gas-operated self-loading design. This is the Z1, the first in the new Z series of universal fit fiberglass stocks from Macmillan. Now the whole point of this stock is that it's designed to be factory inletted in such a way that it can accommodate essentially any true to spec Remington pattern bolt action and pretty much any barrel profile. This particular barreled action, the, the action itself is made by Rock River Arms and it's called their RBG, or Rock Bolt Gun, action. And it's really representative of the kind of high-end Remington footprint-based bolt actions that we're seeing today. The one difference in the 1888 commission rifle versus the 71 or the 7184 is that it's designed for use with a modern high pressure cartridge and they had to create a locking system that was capable of handling this increased pressure and so they turned to a gunsmith at Spandau Arsenal by the name of Louis Schlegelmilk and he designs the two lug locking system that locks up in the front receiver ring, which he notes as being a far stronger, far more durable design than other locking systems that are in existence at the time, such as the Lee system, which locks at the rear of the receiver. <laughs> 